Well, thanks for coming. A couple quick comments about the Cal game. Um, I thought for uh, for college football and, and uh, Big Ten, Pac-12, that was a, a great atmosphere. Uh, I made a big deal about it at post-conference com uh, commentary just about how our players mentioned it, our staff mentioned it, and I want to just publicly once again thanks uh, say thanks to all the Buckeyes who traveled and then also the, the California Buckeyes who were there in attendance. It was, a, it was really a spectacle to see that many uh, Scarlet and Gray in the audience, and it was certainly noticed and appreciated. Uh, also, like to uh, commend the, our opponent. I thought they, uh, that quarterback is uh, going to be. It's one of the best. I just watched the film. Finished up finally our defensive film, and and I don't think we played great. Uh, but I also think the team we played has a very good scheme. That's amazing that they got that in as quickly as they have. I didn't expect that when I heard that uh, that coach was hired there, and then they were going to play a freshman quarterback. But uh, very good players, very good skilled athletes. There are two receivers and a couple of the running backs who are complaining we're in America. And I just think that uh, to put in that kind of an offense that quickly, because uh, uh, they did execute very well, especially their screen game and, and their quick throws. Uh, the champions of the game uh, on defense only had two. Uh, Christian Bryant, great out as champion. And Joey Bosa, defensive player of the game, as a true freshman, played uh, almost 80 plays. Uh, Christian Bryant played 92 plays, obviously a lot of football there. And those are the champions on defense. On offense, I thought that guys uh, played very well. Um, executed at a very, very high level. Uh, offensive line, we had three champions, Jack Mehort, Marcus Hall, and Taylor Deckert, which is he's come a long way from that first game. And then tight end, Jeff Hireman played. He didn't, I don't believe he had any catches, but he played. He A lot of those big runs on the edge were because of him and Evan Spencer, who I'll get to here in a minute. Uh, Jordan Hall, great at the champion, 30 carries for 168 yards, three touchdowns, playing very well for us. And then we had four wide receivers, maybe the first time since we've been here. That's the way it should be. Uh, Philly Brown, uh, graded out a, a champion at seven catches. Evan Spencer, uh, I called him up in front. We had a 6 o'clock team meeting this morning. We had uh, Evan Spencer, I called him out. That's one of the best efforts I've ever seen a wide receiver play. And I'm not talking about the ball in his hand because uh, we tried to get it to him a few times, but just his blocking of the safeties were, was as good as I've ever seen. Devin Smith, three big hits for 151 yards. He graded as champion. And Chris Field, two touch, uh, one touchdown. Uh, but he played graded as champion as well. Offensive player of the game was uh, our quarterback, Kenny Guyton. Um, uh, did very well. So uh, very pleased with our team win. Uh, special teams, uh, I don't Shoot, I don't think I have that in there. Our special teams player of the week was Pitt Brown. Uh, did very well. Jamar, Jamal Marcus played very well. And there's some things that we have to continue to. We're just not real dynamic in the kicking game right now. And that has to improve, obviously, uh, as we get into uh, this game and then, obviously, the Big Ten season. So very pleased with their effort. And uh, that was a tough trip. That was awful coming home. And uh, we got rolled in our driveway at 6, uh, 6 a.m. in the morning. and. Old guys can't sleep in planes very well, so so it was a very tough trip, but very uh, much easier to make that trip home after a W. So I answer any questions for you. Far left, Urban, Rusty. Um, Urban, other people will look at this next game you got and say, well, it's an FCS opponent. Does it make any difference to you, and do you think it makes any difference to the players who you're playing that you can get what you need out of it to be prepared for conference play next week? Uh, it does make a difference. I could give some coach speak up here and say, Howard, oh, you know, it does make a difference. So we're going to have to really coach them hard this week. Um, I do think there's – I haven't studied them well enough yet, but I think there's some very good athletes that we're going to face. But it does uh, – absolutely it makes – these players are smarter than coaches, so they're – uh, we need to do a very good job of coaching this week and not look past uh, a team that could, has – you see it all the time. Someone There's going to be one every year, maybe two every year, and the, it can't be this one this week. Brent Rowe, Steve? Well, I didn't hold my hand up, but I'll definitely ask a question. Uh, the quarterback situation, <laughs> uh, <laughs> certainly it's early in the week and, and you haven't seen Braxton oh, practice sorry. yet, but in your mind, you said last week if, he's, if he was healthy, he was going to play. Obviously, he wasn't. If he is healthy this week, would you put him in there, or would you? Absolutely. As he deferred conference play, or no, 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 no. We, uh, Braxton, we still got a, we got a, we got a lot of work to do. Um, so, no, if if he's ready, he's, he'll play this week. Back row right, David Wilcox. Thanks, Wilkinson. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Carlos Hyde has been at least three games. Is he going to be back this week? As of right now, he's back and uh, anxious. Down. He's done a really good job. He's run a scout team uh, the entire time. Has been a very good attitude, taking care of his business in the classroom, and we're anxious to get uh, Carlos back. Following up on that, with the way Jordan's been playing, does it allow you to move Jordan around, or do you almost want to just I don't know. keep him? I've been thinking about that. I, I, it's a good issue to have because uh, Carlos did a lot for us a year ago. A lot. He's very talented running back and. And that, that was hard. That was hard on everybody. It was hard on Carlos most of all, but it was hard on, on all of us too. I mean, because Carlos did a lot of good things in that whole situation. Uh, so I don't know. I'll answer that later in the week. But Jordan Hall certainly has earned the right to touch the ball in a, in a big way. So I gotta, I'm not sure yet. Front row, Tim. Yeah, Aaron, uh, just a couple things. Uh, number one, you were talking about watching that the video of, uh, of Cal's uh, Offense against your defense and stuff. Does, does it make you kind of couch the, some tackling problems and things like that? I mean, you know, did you see problems there that you mm -hmm. saw a year ago, or is it? Well, is it I think uh, Ryan Shazier had I don't get, I think four or five missed tackles, and it's the thing I always look at when is effort. If there's an effort issue, which I felt like at one time last year there was uh, a bad one, and I don't believe there's an effort issue. Matter of fact, I thought our guys played very hard. Um, there were some missed tackles. I want to say we had 16, which is we want a single digit missed tackles. Uh, and Shazir was a culprit. If you remember last year, he was a big culprit. And it was, he overruns it and they're cutting back on him. So that's, the good thing is, that's all, he can learn to do that. It's not effort or courage or anything like that. So missed tackles are a problem. And this, we call it triggering on the screen. It's those screens that hurt us where you sit back and, and linemen release to block players, they don't, as long as you're sitting back, you'll get blocked. The ones that trigger, like Bradley Roby, if you remember, in the second quarter, did a great job, came in or made a great play. That's called triggering on a screen. So we, that's something we have to get better at. I was going to say, uh, and the other thing, as you're getting ready for Florida a &M, is there anybody that jumps out at you on their side of the ball? Their quarterbacks had a little bit of a struggle to begin with. Florida and, I have yeah. not had enough time. Oh, really? We're still wrapping up this one. That's what we do today. Urban, to kind of revisit Rusty's question a little bit, the, the, these games, these games that are like, kind of look look on paper at least be mismatches. Are those difficult? I mean, these aren't the fans' favorite games. I'm thinking maybe they're probably not the coaches' favorite games either, as far as coaching and getting their players ready. Is this a diff? Is it? Well, I've coached in a few games where I was 21 point underdog. Those aren't real fun to go coaching either. <laughs> uh, so, it's been a while since I had one of those, but that's. Uh, no, I, don't, I just, I'm anxious. Right now, I think there's a good culture in this program of to earn playing time, to earn touches, to earn catches, to earn throws, to earn anything. You have to perform very well in practice. That's all I care about. And that's, and I, I don't want to say they're faceless opponents because they're not. Of course they're not. But right now, this time last year, we had a real problem. And the real problem was there was a culture offensively that uh, I didn't, I couldn't stomach. It was one that was just, you saw it. And uh, this this time around, I'm seeing guys fighting for the football. And the way to do it is go out and practice really, really hard. So that's that's all I got my mind on right now is I can't wait to go out and practice again. And and uh, we're going to take some of the, the older players. I'm going to give them. They had to work out and give their schedule a little bit. That I mean, that was a tough to get home at 6 a.m. Uh, I gave them yesterday off. Today they had to get some workout in and some other stuff done. And uh, the young players who didn't play much will go out and practice a little bit today. And then we're going to come back tomorrow and go full speed ahead. Front row middle, Todd. Urban, is it easier to do, like you said, it's not a faceless opponent, but it's almost like you guys are competing against yourselves right now. Is that easier to do early some in Some positions are, that's what every coach's dream. You're, you're darn right. It is, uh, uh, every coach's dream is to have competition at, at a position. Unfortunately, there are some units that there's no competition. You know, I wish our linebacker unit had a little more depth right now. And uh, right now they don't. There's not people competing to trying to go take a spot. Once you do that, that's when you see these incredible performances because of people are working that hard. What about the quarterback? Is there more competition Absolutely. right now than you anticipated there being Absolutely. at this point? Yeah, yeah there's, uh, you know, Kenny Guyton's earned some time. He's, he did a nice job. Front row right, Austin. And then when did you know for sure that Braxton wouldn't be able to play on Saturday and will that be a similar timeline now moving forward this week or how? I know the MCL of injury very well um, and he had a grade one 
Oh, to a grade two, which means those things heal. With linemen, you could probably get in there a little quicker. Uh, immobile quarterback, you could probably get him in there quicker for who Braxton is as a player. You know, I kind of, my heart knew that was going to be hard, but I kept my hope up uh, that he'd be ready at least in, in case emergency situation, say something. Because, you know, quarterbacks are always thinking a pair and a spare. You know, if you're down to your pair, the second one, who's next? And it would Braxton, I kept talking, you know, thinking all week, okay, I want to probably start Kenny, but at least I have five ready to go. And five, you know, we kept, you know, I, I knew probably Thursday was going to be a long shot. And then Friday didn't look good. Then Saturday we tried it one more time, and it just wasn't stable. I mean, I guess two weeks ago we spent a lot of time saying, does the offense change dramatically when Kenny goes in? Are there actually things that Kenny does better than Braxton at this point? Uh, probably certain things. Um, you know, I think Kenny's a natural option quarterback. You know, Braxton's not quite as uh, natural pitching the ball. Um, I'd say that's probably the one area that, that Kenny excels at. And, I mean, there's a couple that are, you know, right now in the last two games, we've ran a more option than we've run in a long time. He has a feel for that, right? Is that what you're talking about? I mean, yeah, it's a when you say the word distributor, he's a distributor. He does a nice job and just something comes to me, I get rid of the ball. They're very good at that, and that's not easy. There's a lot of quarterbacks I've had that are just that's not natural to them to, to option. Front row, Bill. How close is his offense, both in terms of weapons and in terms of pace, to being what you envision this offense being? That was being? the first time. Uh, good question, Bill. That was the first time that uh, I saw what you guys probably saw. We were, we we're going a very good tempo. I think Tom Herman feels better now that last year we didn't feel that way, where guys are looking to the, it's a, it's a very complicated. To put in a no huddle, that's why I gave such much credit to Cal. I mean, to think that they got that in, and we weren't able to do that. Uh, so it takes a while to get the tempo at the way, the way you want it, and that's not just the quarterback. It's every position to, to get the signal, get lined up, and go at a good tempo. So it, it was uh, the tempo and, and production from the skilled athletes are getting close. Braxton, did he fight you at all or try to fight you as far as playing Saturday? Oh, yeah, he wanted to be in there. But he knew. He's... he's uh, I mean, it fight me, but he knew that uh, uh, it wasn't it wasn't the right thing to do. Back row right, Clay. Coach Wire, is it is it possible Braxton would sit again? I don't think so. I'll know more. He's actually working out here pretty soon, and uh, by I'd see there's pretty good chance. Uh, what's I don't want to give a percentage. I, he's probable to play this week. Is it unusual? It seems unusual. You have two uh, quarterbacks as captains. Does that strengthen that, or does it confuse players on who's our leader kind of thing? I think it would if there was uh, uh, personality conflicts, if there was agendas. Uh, there's certainly none uh, here, and so I don't think there's any confusion whatsoever. Front row, Doug. Urban, with what you do know, you said you dealt with the sprained MCL before. When Braxton does get back on the field, will he be, you expect the Braxton of old, or is there anything that he... Is that a kind of thing that can linger? Even it can linger. It's, it can linger. And that's something we'd have to be smart. I'll have to evaluate that as we go. But that's, uh, that is certain. The lateral movement is not the straight ahead. I think straight ahead he can go right now. It's the lateral movement. The MCL is the medial uh, lateral ligament on the inside of your leg. So that's where you have to just watch it. And, and just with what you've been talking about, with the idea that you would maybe still want to try to get Kenny in somehow. I mean, it, on some level, that's almost remarkable to think about that you have a quarterback that, that people thought was the Heisman Trophy favorite coming into this season, and yet you may have a backup quarterback that you feel like deserves to be on the field in some way. Some way, yeah. Can they be on the field together? Uh, we we're, didn't have that dilemma a year ago. You know, uh, or not dilemma, but luxury. So there's, there's, I have not really done that, but I'm, we're in conversation about that right now. If he's one of the best 11, you have an obligation to get him on the field a little bit. And if I haven't said he's the best, one of the best 11 yet, but that's something we're in the process. That's our job of coaches to ID that. The good thing is, once again, there are some choices now. I mean, you have some, I mean, I just fast forward or push rewind one year and think about the development of Evan Spencer. You know, it breaks my heart he didn't catch it. The way he played in that game. I mean, I just, if someone could give him a touchdown, he deserved for the way he played in that game. But, he, you know, it just didn't happen. But then you had Devin Smith, Evan Spencer, Philly Brown, and Chris Fields, and Jeff Hireman's also another guy that deserves a ball in his hand. So you got, 
it's it's a great issue to have. There's good players that need to get on the field. Is there any lesson in all of this for any backup on this team or any backup out there anywhere? That Same lesson he proved last year. Yeah, and, and when he did the thing against Purdue, that was a lesson. That's, these kids probably heard it six or 7,000 times. Because it is. I think it's a I, – I, I forgot I did an interview one time. It's arguably one of the most interesting case studies I've ever had as a coach is the story of Kenny Guyton. And if you knew where he was January a year and a half ago, and that's where I, I, I'm a parent, so you go right to think how – can you imagine being his parent right now, how cool that would be to see his development. You, if you want to buy stock, buy stock in Kenny Guyton because what's he going to do after football someday is going to be really neat. Front row, Lori. I know that people talk about depth a lot of times, and I mean players, but you've got a deep coaching staff. I'm wondering, though, if you had to go <coughs> without one of your coaches, like Florida a and expects to, is their, uh, their offensive coordinator been hospitalized. I wonder what you would have to do to make adjustments. Something I hope not does not happen. Uh, but when I put the staff together, I try to hire two coordinators on each side. It's real important to me because we've had a history of guys moving on to become head coaches, and I want to promote from within. I don't want to go out and restart. Restarting's hard, and so uh, that was built. So we, when I hired Everett Withers, it was for a reason. And when I hired Ed Warner, it was for a reason. Those are guys, both co-coordinator titles, very involved. So I want to not be stuck without a guy that can call plays or call defenses. Do you think that'll make it to anticipate what Florida A&M might do? I'm sorry, I didn't even know. I got to. I mean, that's you lose. You said coordinator. Yeah, their offensive coordinator has missed the past two games after being hospitalized. And the latest report out of Tallahassee was that he's not going to make the trip. I suppose that yeah, could change. I, I didn't know. That's uh, that's a tough situation. You know, one time in uh, we lost the game against Auburn. Uh, my offense coordinator had appendicitis like the night before. And that was he came back for the game, but it wasn't. So that's that's a problem. Last two questions. Back left, Jared. Uh, Coach, I want to ask you about uh, specifically the offensive line. You mentioned Bosa, uh, the, the game that he had getting his first start. Also, Chris Carter, if I remember correctly, came in the game the first play, got in, made the attack. Uh, yeah, could you take me through the uh, the depth that you're developing there, especially with your younger guys, and maybe the, the luxuries that's giving you now on that side. Well, Adolphus Washington went down, who we think is one of our better players, and, and you know, a true freshman jumps in there, plays 78 plays, and gets a defensive player of the week. That's that's good recruiting. That's good development by Mike Brable. And he, he does have some a depth there. I mean, and, and uh, we can play better, but the, the fact that you lose Tommy Shutt and you lose uh, Adolphus Washington for a couple games and are still able to keep a rotation going there, that, that's why you go out and recruit as hard as you can. You know when those two might return at this point? Adolphus is uh, questionable for this week and shuts out. Shuts a mid-year guy because of his surgery on his foot. And final question, Todd. Coach, you talked a lot about development today. Devin uh, Smith's development from a year ago, was his, is his development more physical or was it more mental? Oh, boy. Uh, he's a pretty talented guy. And you remember, he had a good game against Cal a year ago, and then we kind of disappeared for a while. So he's got a – it's with, with Devin, it's uh, consistency. Certainly not talented. Very talented guy. He's a wonderful uh, young guy to be around. It's just every week showing up with that eye of the tiger. And uh, when he does, he's a really good player. Is he, is he bought in? I mean – Oh, yeah, he's bought in. He's just a – I don't want to say he's young because I think he's a junior now. He's a junior. He's, he's bought in. He's a wonderful guy to coach. Great kid. A great family. Uh, he just needs to be consistent.